Hi and welcome. My mission is to enable students to love and enjoy maths by making math simple for them to understand. So these videos are very detailed for the purpose of helping them understand rather than simply memorizing the concepts. I'm Benjamin, author of 18 math guidebooks found in all major bookshops and personal tutor to more than 2,500 students over the last 20 years. Remember to subscribe for more of my teaching and student motivation videos. For a printable copy of this question, please join my Telegram group found in the description below. Let's start to really understand maths. Hi, uh, right now I'm going to teach you how to solve questions that involve patterns like these. Uh, in recent years, this has been asked quite uh, commonly. So uh, it would be good to know this and the system for handling a question like this. Okay, so let's read the keywords first of this question from the SCGS. 2021 paper, year end paper, um, essay two, paper one, last question. So normally the last two questions of MCQ tend to be a little bit harder. So it's good to be able to deal with these questions effectively and efficiently. All right. So this, the keywords in this question is that the table has got four columns. <clears throat> and there's a pattern, of course. And the first four rows are shown here. There are four columns, A, B, C, D, and there are four rows, one, two, three, four. So in order to start a question like this, what you need to do is you need to be able to look for a pattern that repeats. So in this case, you cannot take the pattern as 0, 1, 2, 3, and then 7, 6, 5, 4. It doesn't make sense, right? So what you want to do is then you want to take it as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven. In other words, there should be a total of eight numbers within one group made up of two rows. Okay, so this is how we are going to do it. And you can check that by looking at the next few numbers. So again, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, that forms another group. So every group is therefore made up of two rows is made up of two rows and made up of uh, four columns, A, B, C, and D. Now, there's a peculiarity about this question in that this uh, table starts with the number zero instead of the number one. I repeat, it starts with the number zero instead of the number one. This is also why the number here is a seven and not an eight, because by right, if there are eight numbers, the first eight should end with an eight. So how do you account for the extra zero? What you do is you take this number that they're asking you and you add one to the number so that you know that in total, there's actually an additional one number giving you 488 numbers instead of 487, okay? And how do you use this? Okay, before I do that, we have to make sure we understand that this represents one group. Okay, so I'm just going to put it here for clarity. This represents one group. And now, what we want to do is we want to test it out. Okay, this is to convince you that it works. Okay, in reality, of course, in the exams, you don't do that, but this is for learning. So let's say I want to know where the number 10 appears, is it A, B, C, or D? What I'll then do is I will take 10, I will add one, just like I'm doing here, because I started from zero. So I need one additional number. I get 11, I then take 11, and I divide this by eight. Where do you think the eight comes from? Okay, if you said one group has eight, then you are right, because there are eight, numbers within one group, okay? So here, I will say for information, I'll just put one group has got eight numbers, okay? And so, because there are eight numbers, I'm dividing this by eight, and I'll get one remainder three. So what is the one? The one is actually 
uh, representing that it is group one and remainder three means that I'm now moving to the second group because the remainder belongs to the next group. So if I now go to the next group, then I need to go to number three. What does that mean? Well, it means this. Right now, you need to think of it as this being number one, the first number, okay, not zero, but one being the first number in any group, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And this would also apply to the next group, meaning one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And as you can see very, very clearly that 10 is actually a three. So this three is the same three that you're seeing over here. And since three is in, group, in column C over here, I now know that if the question was asking me in which column will the number 10 appear, the answer is column C, okay? Column C. Now, the next thing I would like to teach you here is what would happen if the number happens to be the last number within the group. So let's take 15 as an example. Okay, 15 is eight, right? So now if I were to take 15, let me show you. Plus one, as usual, just like the previous question. So now I've got 16. If I divide this by eight, because every group has eight, I will get exactly two groups with a remainder of zero. Now notice that the number here is zero. It is not an eight, right? Although I can see clearly it's an eight. That is because eight out of eight is equals to one complete group. So when it's a complete group, what you will see is you will see a remainder of zero instead of an eight. Eight will never appear in this division, okay? No matter what number you're looking for. So if you understand that, then right now you should understand that whenever you see a zero as the remainder, then you know that you're referring to number eight and number eight is column A. Therefore, the <clears throat> number 15 should be in column A. So if the question was 15, answer is column A. So now let's apply all this knowledge to our question here, which is, what is the column in which 487 will appear? So 487 plus 1, 488, as you have already seen in the working over here. Okay, the working over here. So now the next step is the same as this one. You will divide it by 8. Let me do that. I will now take 488, divide it by 8, and I should get 61 with a remainder of zero. Okay, 61 with a remainder of zero. So with 61 remainder zero, as I've just taught you, the remainder zero will refer to the remainder zero here, meaning that it is in number eight. So a zero is actually an eight, and an eight is column A. Therefore, for this particular question, the answer is that number 487 will appear in column A. A. Okay, so remember to revise, look back and forth. If you need explanation, to listen to the explanation again for any part, please do so. Okay. Were the explanations clear and useful for you? Let me know by leaving your questions in the comments below. Remember to subscribe for more teaching and student motivation videos. And if you are serious about your child's future, call or WhatsApp me at the number found in the description below to help your child score and excel while studying less. I'll see you again.